तुमने आग लगाई है अंदर चरणों की आग है हम सबको चला के लाख खड़े देंगे Well, I mean, firstly, what a great panel I'm joined by today. A warm welcome to all of you and uh, welcome to London as well. And congratulations on Bombay Mary Jam. Thank you. Thank you. Right, I'm going to begin with the creators first because I think it's quite an interesting sort of series to come out at a time like this when obviously on one hand India obviously is becoming a superpower. There's so much development happening and here we are going back in time to a very scary time actually I would say where it was a newly independent India where we were almost you know we had to fend for ourselves because of colonialism and all of that so why do you think it's perhaps appropriate right now to see something of this nature farhan and then aparna firstly i must say when you said the creators and he's sitting right <laughs> yeah oh no no we'll be coming to you with more answers yeah, yeah. so I'll just make that very very clear um you know honestly uh, nobody stops to think about this when a script comes along that blows your mind you know you Quite don't literally. stop yeah you know see so yeah you don't stop to think about like is this the right time to be making it or not there's a story there that has moved you there's a story there that has really like held your attention as you've read every single page there are characters there that are fascinating there's dynamics of relationship that you're just wanting to know how it's going to play out um and you know as as a as a creative person as a producer i mean that just you know gets your blood pumping and you're like man i want to make this now mm. so that's really how we we approached it the, the work in itself will find a place Yeah. you know in in what it's in what it's going to do what it's going to mean to people um in in the chronology of of series that have been made in india with time like does this find a place uh, of its own that time will tell you know but our focus as producers really is to tell something that we know people we feel that we would love to watch to start with and then eventually of course because of that that people mm-hmm. hopefully will And what about you, Aparna? I think when it comes to you and backing the sort of, I mean, we had a conversation outside of how much I'm loving the content that's coming from Prime Thank at you. the moment. I mean, again, for you, when you sort of, you know, put that stamp of approval, so to speak, on a content, what really takes your mind? We want to tell all kinds of stories. We want to tell uh, stories that are in the hands of really passionate creators. We want to tell stories that are rooted, uh, that are differentiated, um, and. you know crime is a genre that always works mm. uh and when a story like the, uh, this which is uh you know really anchored in emotion it's about the family dynamics it's the classic uh, conflict between good and bad and uh, you know legacy and aspiration uh it it really had us lean in and we believe mm. that it's a story that will definitely resonate with everyone mm-hmm. And I think what a combination of Hussein Zaidi's writing and of course Rensel as well. I mean, I loved Qurban. I thought it was such a honestly that film deserved a lot better. It Thank was you. so intense and I think that intensity was definitely palpable from the few episodes that I've seen of Bombay Mini Jaan. I think if there's anyone who knows how to write crime in cinema, I think it is you in Hindi cinema at least. It's definitely yourself. Thank you. When it does come to writing that and creating that atmosphere, what factors do you consider as well as a writer? you know quite frankly i don't consider anything uh, i mean that will be like navel gazing you know you, it, it'll be it's it's you're too self aware and you won't be able to write i think you should the first thing i try to tell myself is can i do a good job on this is this something that you know i'm going to feel passionate about when i'm driving to the set maybe 3 years from now that's one of the reasons to take a job i think otherwise you know there's a lot out there that people can do better but secondly i like thrillers and i like uh, this world gangster a gangster film or a show was on my bu- bucket list uh, simply because i'm so scared of boring people you know i think other like a romcom <laughs> or a comedy you know i don't know if i i have the craft to hold you but i do know that maybe this comes easily to me and i'm sure that is a thriller or a gangster drama I won't run the risk of boring you. Whatever else I do, right or wrong, yeah. I won't. You know, so that's uh, it's just something I like doing. I like watching. So I guess maybe it translates. Hmm. Very interesting. I think if there's someone who really surprised me, I think that is of course Kritika Kamra here. Um, I can't believe the Arohi from Kitni Mohabbat hai is literally playing a very fierce character. I mean, I can't believe it either. Exactly my point. I mean, as surprised as we are as media as audiences. 
How surprised were you actually with yourself as an actor? I was very surprised by the decision to cast me, honestly. Really? Uh, yeah, because it's just something that I don't, it doesn't come by often for me. Things like this, characters like this, because I'm, I'm the quintessential good girl. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but I was also blown away by the script when I read it. It's just like I started reading and binge read the, the script. And uh, what fascinated me most about Habiba was that she's, uh, she is a spunky young woman like any other woman, but you put morality in the mix and suddenly she becomes a not regular person. Mm. And uh, that's what was interesting about her also because she's so different from Arohi. Yeah, true. Oh God, yeah. yeah. Miles apart, for sure. Yeah. But again, I think what I was speaking with Avinash about as well is that whole theme of aspiration because obviously, you know, Kritika and Habiba are two different people, right? But do you ever find it quite overwhelming sometimes when you are having to really step into a character, into a zone, which is contrasting to you as well? Because I'm sure it must have been quite intense at times as well. It's intense, it's challenging, but also that's the fun of it. I think all of us want to play characters and be people that we are not. Uh, that's, the, that's the best part of the job, you know? So uh, it, it was made much easier for me on this particular, you know, this show especially mm. because all the work, all the research was already done. Uh, I joined the cast. I was the last one to join the cast. Oh, so wow. I had a lot of catching up to do, but uh, everybody else was so in their characters. Uh, Shujat is so clear about what he wants and gives such specific direction of what he wants to, what wants you to work on, that uh, it kind of became, you know, I got comfortable uh, within the team very soon mm. and that made it easy. But also like on set, you don't want to think about these things. You want to actually not carry the baggage of playing something that's so intense. Otherwise, you won't be able to, you know, stay true to the character. You know, if I may add, uh, I mean, as, as an actor, when you read a script, and if the character that you're being asked to play scares you oh, in terms of how will I do this, yeah. you know what I mean? Gives you anxiety or makes you nervous. That's an amazing feeling, yeah. you know, because you're being challenged in a way that every actor wants to be challenged. And mm. just in, and to, uh, to have that doubt, like, can I do this? And then go out there, work on it day on day and try and, of course, give your best and do your best. And then when you see that, wow, when people see it, it's very reaffirming for you as an actor to be able to do that. So actually something scaring you, putting you out of your comfort zone is a great thing to do. Wow. As an actor. What a Tufan response from a Tufan actor. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Chiming in a bit, chiming in a little bit on the Amazon Prime titles there. No, <laughs> no but I think Thank it's you. great. <laughs> no, but I think it's wonderful. And I think aspiration, I think, is something which also connects. I mean, being yourself, I mean, Kritika, obviously, not to use the word outsider again, but obviously you are a fresh actor. You don't have links into the industry. You are obviously... You know, you've worked hard to get to, I mean, as all of you have, of course. But for you, again, that aspiration that maybe you had when you began, did you ever have to tap into that sentiment at that point in time as well when you were playing this role? For this one, no. I'd be lying if I said so. I mean, I keep that separate. There is, you don't want any remnants of your own personality. And I, I'm not that kind, that's not my process, actually. I'm not the kind of actor who really delves into their own experiences. I feel like I like to create, of course, a character is a part of, you have to put parts of yourself and find a, that person in you. But uh, I, I keep that separate. For mm. me, it's about staying true to that character and uh, just being in the moment and mm. creating a whole new person that's yeah. uh, not, uh, that doesn't share any. Otherwise, it'd be really difficult. You'd also judge your character. Yeah. You can't get judgmental of these kind of, like especially this character. Mm. So you have to keep that away. I don't need to justify the character or relate with the character to make it believable, mm. I think. I think also before there was that whole sense of coming to terms with the OTT platforms, but I think now we've kind of made truce with that. And it's coming to a point where I feel like nostalgia has become a really huge source of getting in the money. I mean, Rocky Orani, for example, is a huge example of that for actually bringing back the audiences in. But I would like to talk about the impact of nostalgia on the OTT front, because, um, you know, it's very rare we've kind of had, I mean, nostalgic, I mean, we had Gala last year from another platform, which was amazing, and it also brought that nostalgic factor in. But I guess for you as content creators as well, how important is nostalgia in your contents that you back and write? Uh. For, for us, uh, we don't look at it from the lens of nostalgia. It's just the story. It's the creator. And uh, we want to tell all kinds of stories. If you see uh, 
the shows that we've put out this year, you know, starting from Farzi to Jubilee, again, tapping Jubilee, into nostalgia. Exactly. Yeah. But, um, you know, there are two incredible docu-series we put out, Cinema Marte Dantak and Dancing oh, yeah, on the Grave. Great. And uh, The Hard, Made in Heaven. So all kinds of uh, stories. We want to give something to everyone, you know, who's watching mm. it. Um, so this is not a lens, but, you know, when you can tap into something that seems familiar yet distant, Mm. It's great. It's, yeah, it's like that little uh, sort of duality that, that's there. It's there. Yeah. For sure. And I think what one thing that I love about Excel's content uh, is that they've often really brought, they have very Indian feel to their contents, but yet it's also presented through a contemporary lens. And at the same time, I've noticed that there's a sense of dysfunctionality. I think all the main characters, mm. whether it's a gully boy, or even if it's a Don. Mm. Um, so for Han, I think for you, what appeals to you the most about dysfunctional characters, dysfunctional stories? I don't know, maybe I'm from a dysfunctional family and I can identify with it. Uh, oh. You never know, you know, every, I mean, the thing is that what makes a person interesting? I mean, I think there has to be, um, if I just see a person who, like, like he mentioned actually, you know, who just does everything and everything's fine and everything's great and he or she, you know, ticks all the boxes in terms of how they are with their family and how they are at work and how they are with their friends. I mean, what is there to watch? You know, there has to be some uh, inherent deep issue mm -hmm. that makes for interesting viewing. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that inherent issue in your personality is then going to like seep into and affect your relationships with different people sure. and create certain dynamics and create dysfunctionality like you mentioned. Um, and to me, that's, that's, that is what life is, you know, and that's how people are, you know, and, and that's what makes viewing interesting, like to, to kind of function in the gray is always very, very interesting. And, and that's, I guess, that just draws me to it mm. when, I, when I read about it. Yeah, and I think Rensel has, is so great at writing gray. I mean, even if we look at Ungli, which was like a vigilante sort of a story, back, what, almost 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, so how do you view, I mean, given the fact that you had written pieces like that then, made Kurban back then, and now obviously writing, of course, and working on Bombay Medijan, how do you now view gray characters, especially on its representation in Hindi cinema too? You know, this thing about grey, we're all grey. I've never found a white person. Mm -hmm. Just think about it. <laughs> you're, you're only white when you're dead. True, actually. You know, there is, act, I mean, and I'm not trying to be flippant, you can say nothing wrong of the dead. Yeah. Otherwise, we all have flaws, which is what makes us human, and that's where great drama is born. Mm. So, um, I don't go so looking for it, uh, you know. Uh, it's just that... It, it helps as a, it, it just helps in the kind of, in thrillers, I mean, yeah, it's great to have, or a gangster drama like this. Mm, for sure. Right, unfortunately, we've run out of time, but thank you so much, Aparna, Farhan, Kritika, and Renzo. It's been such a pleasure to have you all on Filmish. Oh, thank, 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 thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.